Well, this is 24 hours later. The clock appears to be happy. Let's step is the pulse clock here, so that's all good. And do a temperature check on the motor. I think the rewind is successful. At the moment I'm taking it off a 15 volt transformator here. And I'll have to build a small transformator in the clock itself. Gonna do a repair on this uh, equity clock, which is uh, from a fire station. And unfortunately with renovations it got dropped on the floor. The chunk has been cut out of here. And, uh, Backlights, but the uh, worst part is the mechanism. Uh, I don't know whether the fall caused it, but the uh, coil is uh, open circuit, a 240 volt coil. Oh, here's the piece missing here. I'll get a bit light, better lighting on here. Uh, this is part of the coil, and uh, yeah, so this was on here. I got yanked on the wires, but it's uh, gone open circuit, so. This is one of these non-self-starting -start clocks, and I remember many years ago, I repaired it once in 1991. Uh, it was dried up grease, so I degreased it and uh, got it going. And now we're going to see if we can... Uh... The plan is, I've loosened already some parts, take this coal out, and it's actually a kit set, so you can take this little coal off here, the power comes out. Get rid of that. See if we can find the brake, but I'm gonna rewind it with a low voltage coil, probably 12 volts, and then put a small transformator in here so I can use a thicker gauge of wire. So that's the plan. Okay, I got the paper wrap off. This is actually a dual voltage coil, I may have said it before. It's got 110 and then 240 volts or 230 volt tap on there, and it's the same as it says on the casing. So um, I'm gonna Take it apart, take the wires off, and then uh, with a bit of luck, I uh, can maybe revitalize it here. So it says here 220 volts, actually 220 volts, 50 hertz. The best way I found to deal removing old coals which are faulty, just uh, cut it off as a knife. There's a very fine wire, and the coal is quite loose on there, so I hope you can see what I'm doing here. So I cut it in and peeling these layers off like this in small slots it goes easier with a pair of pliers just hack into it and then cut it out. I would say this will be about 10, 12,000 turns, which seem to be typical for these little motors. Okay, it took me about 10 minutes and I got all the copper winding off and uh, got the empty coal, the empty bobbin. So now I have to design a little uh, holder to fit it in and we wind it again. I've modified my basic winder, just old mechano parts, I've taken the counter off and uh, I've drilled this little sleeve here from aluminium which I press fitted onto the mechano shaft and I drilled that out with about an M6 size I think around that number. I find a good thing to check out wire gauge, use the American wire gauge for fitting the drill bits in and the size diameter for like uh, the pulley and th the likes of this. So you can just um, use that to match the right drill, the spin spindle of that. So I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to try to wind this up. I made a lead-in wire just from uh, some uh, small 0.02, some alarm wire, and I wire wrapped a green wire that's gauge 36 onto this end and then I put a heat shrink on it. So I sanded it down with a bit of sandpaper and I apply some solder shortly. See if we get some solder on here. You can see the solder is flowing well, so that's a good connection. Heat swing that in place.
Here, as you can see, the leading wire is the most awkward one uh, to put in always. It's um, this one, the heat shrink. Um, I'm just experimenting. It's going to be low voltage calls, so it's not that critical. I'll try to get quite a few windings on there. And I may put some tape over it. I'll see how we go. We'll just start getting a few layers on and we'll see how we go carefully. We're on the tensioning. I'm just going to hand wind this thing and do a rough count. 20. I've got this, the, these two little wheels here just for tensioning the wire a bit and uh, yeah, let's spin it up here try to make a nice uh, package out of it Okay, I'm up to about 1300 turns so every hundred I make a tick here as I haven't got my counter and it's uh, going pretty well so uh, yeah, I keep my finger at the back here to keep the tension on there normally, but yeah, it's spinning up nice I'll probably, I put a layer of tape on the left hand side with the oranges and um, I'll probably uh, put a bit of uh, hot glue over there Okay, I'm up to number uh, 1600 turns or thereabouts plus or minus 50 or so, I'm not too worried about it um, I'm gonna wire it up and I'm probably gonna do the final adjustment with either a series resistor or a small transformer. We'll see how we go. But progress is good. Well, my final turn count is about uh, 2230. Give, give or take 100 out of sight. I'm not too worried about it. Now, uh, carefully keep the tension on the line before you cut it and loop it. This one got a little hole in the collar in this side of this. Uh, Call and I'll loop it through there and then solder the takeout lead onto it. Okay, the coal has been wound. Overall, looks pretty good. Put some white clear tape over it. Put the other lead on there and then I'm going to do some testing and see if we have some luck uh, with this uh, particular clock. Well, I got the clock going. Um, I finished off the call and I'll put it in. I'll show you the other side. And it appears to be working fine. It runs at about 17 volts. Here we go. It runs perfect. Coal doesn't get warm. It's cold, which is fantastic. Now I need to work out a uh, matching transformator to get it uh, to work. And the coal is cold, completely cold to the touch. Fantastic. So I must say this is a successful uh, repair. We're lubricating the device and uh, fit that little transformator. That's the running voltage and um, here we go. Tidy up the rest of the terminals. Put it all back together. Okay, I've just taken a small transformator out of uh, Microwave oven control circuit board, um, one of these. And that came spare out of here, and I've taken it out, and it puts out about 26 volts unloaded, as you can see here. So I would say that's a 24 volt transformator. So I'm going to fit it in the clock and uh, give it a long test run. Okay, the clock is now running a soak test. I've just uh, implemented the transformator on the back. Um, recycled from an old microwave device. Um, we'll flick this device over here. So, the standard movements, and I got an uh, 230 volts to 24 volt transformator from a microwave oven, providing 24 volts to the call. I've had the clock running on 16 or 15 or 16 volts for about 24 hours and now the call is cold. So I'll let this go for a soak test and overall I'm really pleased with the result. Um, I will add another f an, uh, half amp fuse in one of the mains wires. So soak testing the device and I'll put some uh, 
Photos on the NAWCC clock forum for people who may want to rewind a call for a electric clock successfully. Cheers. So I'll do a test. I got another transformer on here that seemed to run better. Um, 15 volts. It was drawing 39 ampere uh, milliampere, and I found this transformer. This a little bit bigger. That seemed to furnish uh, the 39 milliampere. What I did. At um, the 20 volts that's put out of this thing, it was running at about 50 milliampere. I've put a 220 ohm resistor in here, which uh, drops the voltage a little bit. Just cold. I just I like to have the lowest current possible on these uh, clock movements. So the lower the current, the better, less heat, etc. And the transformer also is uh, cold. Don't want to stress these components, so this is shock test in day three for this experiment for now and this is just an enjoyment to watch And this clock has the so-called start-stop device, so you need to pull the lever and then hopefully it flicks the motor and it keeps spinning. There we go. The clock is all back together. We tested for a while and it uh, works really well. Empire made British clock with uh, manual start. Sometimes temperamental. Stop it. I'll start the device. Pull it just the right way and it should hopefully lock in.